Hello my darlings and welcome back to my channel and to another video. I know some people say that my hello darlings is cringe worthy. Well, comments like that always make me cringe as well. So we're even now. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this new video because it is a video that I promised you a while ago. And that is comparing the whole La Nuit Tresor line. And I'm going to tell you which one to start with, which one perhaps not to get, which one's the best which one has the best longevity, etc, etc, etc. So if you're interested in that, then keep on watching. But before, please don't forget to subscribe and of course, follow me on Instagram. Also, guys, as I said in one of my previous videos, uh, I am very active on Instagram in terms of the um, Ukrainian matters. So please follow me there. Um, if you want to get some updates, if you want to get some information how you can help, um, then definitely check me out on Instagram and also my regular content is there as well. So yes guys, let's get into it right away. So the first one, let's start how they actually showed up. Uh, this is the original La Nuit Trezor. And this one really got love from so many people as soon as it was released. It is quite dark, sweet, fruity. It has some peppers in here, very interesting note structure. Um, and this one really rocked the world in terms of those beautiful feminine gourmand fragrances. I must say this is absolutely stunning. However, for some reason, I didn't have it in my collection for the longest time. I did have it when it was released, you know, when I was quite young, I must say. Uh, but after that, I never repurchased for some reason. I just didn't have that much love towards this fragrance. But at the moment, it is so stunning to me. I wouldn't say it's too sweet. Definitely not. I, it is a gourmand-ish fragrance, but it's not overly sweet. It has some greener notes. It has some incense touch. I think that papyrus is also quite prominent. So very, very interesting note combination. It's nothing like your, you know, um, easy, and popular La Vie Belle, even though La Nuit Trezor is also a popular fragrance, obviously. This one is way darker. It's not as straightforward, I would say. Because at first you might think, oh, it's a nice, sweet, gourmandy fragrance, girly, slightly fruity. Not really. There is so much going on in here. I think it's definitely, I'm going to tell you straight away, this one is definitely the most complex out of the whole line. This is the first one and the most complex one. Uh, the further we go through the other flankers, the easier the structure of the fragrances get, actually. This one is definitely the most complex, the most unique. Very long lasting this one, very, very long lasting. And um, I think in terms of La Nuit Trezors, this one is the least problematic when it comes to longevity for most people, if you get what I'm saying. So um, I think it's not a safe blind buy, but if you like, how it performs on you, then you're gonna be in love for years and years and years to come. I didn't appreciate this fragrance when I was younger for some reason, um, but now I really appreciate all those notes that are in here and really pop up to my nose. To me, it's not a straightforward fruity gourmand whatsoever. No, it is so much going on in here. Very interesting scent. I think if it was packaged into a niche, you know, branding and sold as niche, nobody would think it's, you know, nothing interesting or anything like that. I think people would really, really love it. So. 
yeah, it's really, really good. <laughs> this has great lasting power, great, great, great lasting power and great performance. It leaves a trail, you know, it leaves a cloud of the scent when you walk by. So this is something that I love the most about perfumes, that beautiful cloud of fragrance as you walk and people can still smell your scent after you're miles away. So this one will definitely give you that. Of course, you can underspray and make it a little bit more intimate, but in general, it's a potent one. Also, I think it's sexy, it's quite loud, and I think it's gonna suit so many occasions. It's gonna be great for parties, it's gonna be great for even formal events, um, maybe even for work. Again, if you underspray slightly, basically don't do the Paulina thing when you shower yourself, but it is just absolutely stunning. So yes, guys. When it comes to those gourmand notes, you've got praline, caramel, vanilla, coumarin. You also have some coffee. So it's a very complex fragrance and at the mid and the opening you've got loads of fruits. You've got strawberry, you've got pear, you've got passion fruit, lychee, bergamot, tangerine, so so many fruity accords but in general it is just so unique guys. It really really is. Love it. I love this one. I am really team La Nuit Trésor for sure for life. So this is the first one. Um, I highly recommend it, but I wouldn't say it is a safe blind buy because there are some nuances to these fragrances that make it on one hand very interesting, but on the other, it might be repelling to some noses and I understand why. So yes, that is La Nuit Trésor, the original. Then we of course have La Nuit Trésor à la Folie. And as you guys probably can tell and know, this comes in the darker bottle and this one is considered to be not as fruity. This is more of a vanilla amber fragrance. You still get pear, you still get bergamot, uh, but then you get actually quite a bit of florals like violet, jasmine, rose, um, and in the dry down you get loads of vanilla, tonka, benzoid, nutmeg, woody notes, ambroxan and patchouli. And in the very top you actually have black currant that opens it up. And I'm not gonna lie guys, personally I think this is my favorite. Just because I am a massive gourmand lover, I love vanilla and in this one the vanilla is definitely very prominent. This one is absolutely beautiful as well. Uh, it still has the DNA of the original Lanoui, but the vanilla is amped up. To me, it's definitely sweeter. Also, slightly less complex. Slightly less complex. It's still interesting, but slightly less complex, all right? You also get beautiful woody undertone that I don't really get in the original and I am a massive fan of woods in the fragrance. So this one is really up my alley. It still is fruity, but that vanilla in here is just so yummy and to die for, I literally can feel my mouth water. So, so beautiful. The violet gives this fragrance slight powderiness. You also get that beautiful, spicy undertone of the nutmeg and the creaminess. It's just to die for, guys. I think this one is my favorite, probably. I don't know. It's very hard to tell with these ones, you know? It's kind of like comparing the Lina to the Lina Exclusive. I can never tell which one is really my favorite. I have the same problem with La Nuit Trésors. I can really not tell which one is my favorite. It really changes with the mood and season. 
But if you love vanilla, I think this is the one you should go for. The longevity, fantastic. Projection, fantastic. I do get comments about this one that it doesn't last on you. Some people have problem with that. And I really don't know where it comes from. You either underspray or really it doesn't last on you for some other reason that I really cannot help you with. Because on me, it really lasts beautifully. And this one, is amazing to layer with other fragrances just amazing if you want to layer it with oud if you want to layer it with other vanilla or other woody notes it is just gonna be phenomenal trust me i love layering it with so many fragrances of mine like uh, Santal Noir from Dior, uh, Silky Woods from Goldfield and Banks. So, you know, those heavy woody unisex fragrances, but also those beautiful vanillas and ambers. It just works so well because it's slightly less complex than the original. It's so beautifully workable with other scents. So if you're a, a fan of vanilla and if you are a fan of layering, I think this should be your choice from the line. So that is La Nuit Trésor à la Folie. Next, guys, we have the Summer Bombshell. And I personally also love wearing it in winter time. It's my beautiful day-to-day -day fragrance um, for those colder months as well. And that is La Nuit Trezor Nude. And this is actually the only Eau de Toilette that I have. Uh, I know I do not have the full spread of the line because I'm missing the Eau de Toilette version of the original and I'm also missing Musk Diamant. Also, actually, I'm not missing it. I do have testers of it, so I'm going to breeze through it quickly. Uh, but I'm going to tell you why I'm going to only breeze through it, all right? Uh, but let's get back to the new one. This one is very straightforward. This one is coconut, bergamot and vanilla and some rose, if I'm not mistaken. This, at the first glance, um, seemed quite greeny to me. It was a little bit too green for some reason. I sometimes have problems with coconut combinations so um you know thank you next from ariana grande i'm not even gonna get into because it was very problematic to me so i think the combination of rose and coconut can be a little bit meh sometimes it just turns into pickle smell this one doesn't do that however on me it's slightly green sometimes. Uh, I think I love it for the daytime in winter the most. Even though it's a coconut smell, I love it for winter. Uh, it will perform very nicely in summertime, I'm sure. It's an absolute favorite of many people. And this one is slightly less strong than the other two that I talked about. This one is not as projecting. It still lasts decent. I'm not gonna say it's bad. I would say six hours you will surely get out of it. So it's not too bad. Uh, of course, I wish it was Eau de Parfum and it had massive beast mode projection. I wish, but you know, since it is called nude, I think the author actually wanted it to be a little bit more intimate. This one is cozy, very feminine, it's sensual. Um, again, it's a coconut based fragrance, so it's gonna be great for summer, but also it's nice and cozy for the winter months. It's a very warm coconut, if you know what I mean. It is classy because of that rose here. So, you know, it's a great all year round fragrance in general. So to all my fans of more intimate scents and coconuts, I think this is your pick from the line. And last but definitely not least, my darlings, we have the new, the one and only La Nuit Trésor Intense that was literally just released. And this, this is Eau de Parfum Intense. And this DNA is 
really on par with what is going on in perfumery right now which is almond 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 everybody wants almond whether it is a bitter almond or a very cozy almond everybody puts almond in their fragrances literally so this one has sour cherry it has rose almonds of course vanilla and woody notes so again not too complex as i said as the further we go the less complex these fragrances are uh, but i would say it's going to be super likable that's for sure this one is going to be super likable very mass appealing um the cherry in here is very nice and dark and juicy which i really like uh, you get a very heavy dose of rose i think this fragrance the intense version is the most rosy fragrance out of the whole range so this one is for the fans of rose um, also of course there's that almond combined with vanilla which gives this fragrance a beautiful sweet nutty base i am a big fan of almonds so don't get me wrong i absolutely love the trends at the moment uh, that almond is pretty much everywhere and i kind of wish it was even more amped up in here because you do smell it closer to the dry down you don't really smell it at the very beginning you mainly get cherry and rose in the opening but for that vanilla and that beautiful almond you kind of have to wait um, the longevity of this one it is good however i wouldn't say it's better than the a la folie or the original la nuit Trezor. i think it's actually slightly worse um, now that we are at the last fragrance from the roundup I have to tell you the longevity and how it performs on each so the most performing I would say is the original La Nuit Trésor then I would say right after that is A La Folie and right after that is the Intense and then we would have the nude one as the least performing i'm not saying it's bad in performance but it's just the you know the most intimate of all of them uh, but back to the intense version again this is a rose fragrance to me it's mainly a rose scent rose with some almonds and vanilla but um, this is a mainly a rose fragrance so the least complex to me out of the La Nuit Trezors. Uh, it is deep, it is dark, it is sexy, it's sweet, it's beautiful. However, it has the least amount of complexity, in my opinion. It's still gorgeous, but um, the first two, A La Folie and La Nuit Trezors original, are definitely more complex and interesting. I'm not saying this, un this one isn't, guys, don't get me wrong, please, but I hope you know what I mean. Uh, so yes that is that and now I still want to breeze through that musky fragrance so the last one that I want to talk to you about is Mast Yaman I do not have the full bottle of it I did go through a couple of decants and I must say straight out of the bat I do like the fragrance to me it is still that original La Nuit Trezor DNA you've got some raspberry uh, you've got some rose, you do have almond and vanilla, so you know that dry down is still very, very on par with the whole range, you know, like very much La Nuit Trésor ish. However, you have a very, very, very heavy dose of musk in here. You have it in the top, in the mid, and the dry down. Uh, it is also combined with violet leaf, which will give you even more of that powderiness floral powderiness in general it is a very nice scent the longevity i would say it's comparable to la nuit Trezor nude so i would put um, la nuit Trezor nude and Masque diamant at the bottom when it comes to the longevity of the line uh, but 
I think if you are a fan of powdery fragrance and musk, you will absolutely adore Masque Diamant for every day especially. So yes guys, that is the full roundup of the whole range. Now let me just give you a ending overall view of the range. And so, for all the lovers of fruity but very interesting fragrances, if you like pepperuse notes, if you like incense vibes, and if you like something that's unique, you have to go with the original. Then, if you love vanilla, if you love gourmandish notes, if you love woody undertones, I think a la folie will be the best for you. If you want something that's coconutty and also slightly more intimate, definitely try the nude one. Also, if you adore musk, adore powdery fragrance, I think you should try musk diamond. And lastly, if you love rose, I think the newest one, which is the intense version, is the one to go for you. So that is it, guys. I really hope you liked the video. I really hope it was helpful for you. So let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. For me, I think it's still the Ala Folie one for now. It kind of changes, you know, because I love them all so much. But yeah, that is it guys. Thank you for watching and see you in my next one. Bye.